So I am here today with Mr. Bakri. Uh, so I'm very excited for this one. This is our first interview with an Arab teacher uh, teaching kind of a mix of students, but teaching Arab students. Uh, so this will also be a special run. We're going to do this one in English, and then <laughs> we're going to also attempt uh, to do this interview in Arabic. So if you want to see what does Arabic interview sound like, uh, you can see the link uh, on the same channel uh, to hear that for the first time. So let's get started. First, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for hosting. So first question, uh, how did you become a teacher? So actually, it was uh, the time of quarantine, and most of the people lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, I'm engineering. My degree is in engineering and electronic techniques. So I'm not a real teacher, you know. <laughs> so uh, so I had to find a job and sort of way any job, whatever it is, because I needed the money. So I need to have something to work. So uh, some schools, they urgently need a physics teacher and uh, of course the physics is so new to the electronic techniques in the university that uh, a specialist uh, that I studied. So uh, I tried and of course I applied for tons of schools but I'd, let's say our luck was in the school a little bit higher. So uh, we had the trailer for four months and uh, it worked out. I think it was a little bit of a uh, different style than the most of physics teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so right right now, um, what subjects do you teach and what grade levels do you teach? Now I'm teaching just physics. Okay. I have a specialist in uh, physics. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching the secondary and the upper grades. So like before new to the IB or something. So, uh, this two stages and this subject. Okay. And um, can you like describe your students? Are they international? Are they Arabs? So, where are your students from? Okay, uh, it's mixed, I would say. So, there's Arabs. Most of them are Kurds. Uh -huh. uh, and this Kurds, most of them, even they are from, I would say, wealthy families uh -huh. or from people from power, some people from power, you know, government, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people, they are like, poorly handle the payment of mm -hmm. the school. And I would say most of them, and, and there is some like uh, international students, but this Kurds or Arab, most of them, they were living internationally. So for example, uh -huh. they were living in Germany and they come here. Mm -hmm. They live in the US, they, they move back. And there is in Europe or Israel or wherever. So they, they come here and they needed international school. So this school was full of mixed uh, students. Even if he was like a Kurdish, but he's not because he raised in totally different country. Uh, and of course there's students that were raised and lived here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so one of the, the first questions I wanted to, to dive into, and I think you're able to bring this very unique experience um, because uh, you're teaching this mix of students, uh, but you're actually from somewhere else. So I wanted to see if you could kind of describe what's the same or what's different about students here and students like where you grew up. So the difference between I grew up is totally different. Like I grew up in so intensity, mm. like the class was until 60 to 70 students in the primary uh, school or the ah, secondary. Ah. So it was like so intense and the teachers were like so hard because of course everyone say whisper something, time it by 60 or 70, <laughs> you find there's like you have a revolution. Right. So so it was like even we couldn't sometimes ask because the teacher won't have all this time. Like sometimes I really envy this case that they have these situations that they everything as we say uh, on a red carpet mm -hmm. for them and they still of course some of the students they just don't care like sometimes I feel like I wish they go there and see 
in which situations we have to study and study hard or figure it out by ourselves mm -hmm. and we still make it. But mm -hmm. the students when they as we say like a little bit spoiled. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you offer for them they will still go down because they don't feel the value for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely right there with you. At the, the school in uh, Jordan that I taught at, it, it was kind of the, the same. Um, the students didn't really appreciate uh, the education that they were getting, uh, which is sad. Um, so hopefully that's something that, that changes. Yeah, and some, some of the students, and really, and you find that they are the first in their class, mm -hmm. that you feel like they are purely paying. Uh -huh. enough for uh, the school and they're like just kicking it like mm -hmm. they are the top on the class or on the whole level as mm -hmm. one of my students she was the whole uh, level and her family like barely uh, the payments mm -hmm. in the school that's awesome yeah well i think you might actually be the first um, science physics teacher um, that we've interviewed for the channel um, so one question I, I really like to ask is how how do you make this an interesting subject for huh. the students? How do you keep them from falling asleep or from causing problems? Exactly. In class? This is a very interesting uh, question. So as myself, as a kid, I just hate physics. Uh, okay. So we had an old lady teacher, and she was like standing, putting her thick glasses, telling the board. This, 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 the speed, this distance over time and stuff and stuff and they were like, uh, 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 oh, oh, we have physics, oh my god. So we were literally suffering. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, for a physics teacher, this is most of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so most of the physics teachers, they just like, to, okay, I understand it, it's like, da -da 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 and the student is just like, dead. so bored. So, uh, for them, of course, it's boring because they don't know this information, they didn't have it. So, the first connection that I made was actually my age. Mm -hmm. So, I started teaching when I was 23. Right. Uh, now, uh, I've been teaching for a year. Now, I'm uh, 24 and something. So, first, the age, it was like not so high, you know, like I'm not. This all just coming and say don't talk that stuff and be just really straight. Mm -hmm. So there was like a lot like the things that they relate like the video games, uh -huh. some of the anime uh, movies or series uh, like whatever shows. So I was relating to them in these subjects and they were so happy about that. It's like we can kind of relate uh, to it. The second thing, some teachers they just like trying to treat in a fake, uh, how should I say, appearance. Mm -hmm. So we come, I'm the teacher, you are the student, mm -hmm. we will talk apart. So the student knows that this is what they say, that you are a big student and you are a big student and you know when the teacher is like just fake it yes. or uh, just uh, fake it until you make it and this stuff, you know? So uh, the teacher, the students knows, this is at least how I feel. So I was just like directly and straight with them. Mm -hmm. And I had like the head of subject was always supporting, supporting me. And I was like, the teacher's mistake, of course. I'm not teaching, he said, like, I'm not teaching for 20 years and I still have mistakes. Mm -hmm. So if I have mistakes, sure we can fix it, but don't just keep it down, you know? Right. And if you teach something wrong to the student, but your pride is too high to tell him, I am wrong. So actually it sometimes happened with me and I was like, yeah, sorry guys, this is it, this is it, you were right, I did this mistake. And they were like, accepted it in a really easy way, and I was like, oh, he teacher, he doesn't know, and blah, blah, blah. Actually, I told them the students, they know more, as they say, capacity than the teacher, because the teacher just in physics, but the students have physics, chemistry, biology, math, uh, Arabic, English, Kurdish, Kurdish whatever uh, subjects it have. So it's many of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, how it, I made it interesting. So instead I'm just sitting and drawing the board. So at first I did like average <laughs> answers. Who like or dislike physics? And I say 95% none of the students 
like physics. And the five percent, they you know, this obsessed with astronauts and mm. the moon and the stars and the stuff. Uh, the ninety, because of the before teacher, he didn't like me, so I don't like the whole subject. Uh, okay, so I don't like the teacher, so I don't like the subject. And of course, it was for me the same for math. Actually, I don't like math that, that much. So I start to make it in a funny way. The nice thing about physics, it's in everything. So while we're sitting now, we're doing physics because of the gravity, because of this, because of that, the water, the mobile, everything is related to physics. Mm -hmm. And the physics is more general. Mm -hmm. So it's related to chemistry, related to history, related to the, the stars, the sun, everything around you is related to physics. So it's more general information, I would say. So we had the first lesson about speed. Everyone knows speed, the, the formula for it, uh, it's distance over time, like kilometer per hour or meter per second. So instead of just telling them and giving them boring formula and stuff and on this wall, I took them all to the yard and I measured 25 meters and it's like everyone, if I start to take the time for them and I was like, okay, your time, your time, your time, your time. And this is the formula, this is over time. The homework is, instead of you going to workbook and do this exercises, the following one, find out your speed. How much your speed was, but in meter per second and kilometer per hour. And they were super excited. Everyone's super excited, including the <laughs> coordinator <laughs> and the head of subject. Like they wanted someone like different. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just like writing the formula and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to always relate the things that they all do know. Mm -hmm. For example, when I tell them, you ride in the car, what do you call it? Right? They say, right. So, what is there's like these numbers you see in the screens? Uh, they say it's like uh, the speed from 0 to 220 uh, kilometer per hour. It's like what? Kilometer per hour? They say per hour. I say, what is the kilometer? They say distance. What is the slash dividing? What is our time? So they found out by themselves mm -hmm. that the speed is distance over time. So when and after they run, of course, and we had fun and laughing, some chubby students were running slowly, some was like running faster, and I was also joining them in the run. Uh, so uh, like after that, we, as we say, for me, I make a social circle outside the class, like in the yard. So we become like their friends, you know? So uh, we took all these times, and you have one distance, the 25 meter, and everyone had their speed. And now, for all their life, I'm sure, they'll never want this the speed. Another time with the force, with the rope and stuff, I make PowerPoint presentation, videos, like I'm trying to use everything that's available to make uh, the process of teaching more interesting, especially the practical one, like I was the only teacher taking them to the lab. I built labs for them because of my engineering uh, uh -huh. techniques. I built labs for them that if you want to buy it, it costs a couple of thousands of dollars, I built it in 15 bucks <laughs> from the garbage. Like uh, some garbage I have, I bought some things <laughs> and I just like fixed it and now it's uh, a lab. It works exactly the same way. Of course, it's not fancy or nice, but it will do 100% the job and even in some points better than the expensive one. Hmm. Yeah. Very so good. it's just like trying to make it really efficient, really seeing it, feeling, touch it. Because usually in the physics, you cannot see the sun or the moon or right. the gravity or the air resistance. You're just like talking, talking. So mm -hmm. trying to apply it uh, more, I would say. As even like buying stuff from my private account to show them springs, uh, magnets, motors, mm -hmm. circuits, resistors, uh, electronic components, this stuff, just so they see. And it's not, always, not, not that much work. For example, if I have a broken lamp, mm -hmm. you open the lamp, you find a capacitor, a dial, the resistor, a uh, coil, you find many things that you will through. Instead of I threw it, I go and take it to my students. Mm -hmm. And some of the components, I took it out with the solder and I give it 
to the student and if they did a good job, here this capacitor gave it as a and they were so happy about it. Yeah, <laughs> I think this was the only and different way. So uh, from the others and other teachers were teaching in school for like eight years, ten years, and the head of subject like was so much like into me better than those guys because they just wanted to finish the lesson mm -hmm. and خلاص let's go. Mm -hmm. It was like I start to take the magic of the lab and I start to be their special of the lab and try to develop it and this stuff. Wow, you have lots of good ideas. <laughs> I think I would like to be a student in class. <laughs> I think uh, also my wife, she's a teacher, she always told me, it's like, if you were my physics uh, teacher, I think I'll be good at physics, not, not, not like now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next question I wanted to talk about is, um, have you had uh, any issues in your class with behavior? How, how do you respond when uh, things happen, students don't want to listen or are disruptive, what do you do? Yeah, this is also a nice question. Uh, some of this, I was trying like uh, to make friends, but not too much friends. Mm -hmm. Like I always leave a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. Okay, now we're joking, but now it's chaos, like make it mm -hmm. serious. So when it's joking, joking, when it's uh, less and less. I always try to make the uh, lesson fun, mm -hmm. laughing, and mutually they, talk, they call me smiley person, like and you always have the smile on your face. So I would like to see everyone around me, sorry, <coughs> laughing, mm -hmm. especially that like, means they're enjoying the lesson. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're sitting or sleeping on the desk. Of course I had uh, many problems with some students. I had a student that is like, he was, he, he thought himself that he's a Russian gangster. <laughs> and I was like, just laughing. And the funny thing is, was the shortest one oh, between yes. all the friends, you know, like he had something missing. <laughs> and he's like, coming to you, hey, yo, yo, Mr. What's up? And I was like, what? Are you from Moscow? And, and he's like, yeah, yeah. My real thing, of course, he was like, just making up. And we are this gangster, whatever it was. And I was like, the parents I was like, you, you, your son need to take care of who is talking. And it's like, I don't know someone online on Facebook or something, like uh, talking to him to gangster or something. She said, no, it's his friends in the school. I was like, no, <laughs> there's no one in the whole school talking like this beside your son. <laughs> so it was this funny. And I was like, I had, I was like trying so hard. So even with him. Even with this, the, the student, you see that there was like no hope, you know, this time. And I was like even trying hard with them. So I, as uh, I study in a, in a class with 60, 70 students, I never had the chance to the teacher come next to me tell me what's wrong, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, I was trying to offer this for everyone, even if I know they don't deserve it. Uh, but I was trying to do this like doing as my conscience said because I would say what if I didn't do that and he will fail in his future later mm -hmm. so I was trying to offer this opportunity especially like I told him if you have any question I'm available 24 7 text me whatever you like and I'll answer as soon as possible mm -hmm. and like sometimes I before the exam the night of the exam I answer question 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. or was like now you asking, you know, everyone is studying before night. <laughs> this is the way that they do here. So I think like this, I try to add the extra caring that my conscience told me to do. Not just like I give my lesson on the board and I don't care. This is the lesson. You have to figure it out. That's it. So that's, that's it, I guess. Yeah, that's good. Uh, the students definitely know when the teacher cares or when yeah. they, the second the school bell ends at the end of the day, they're gone, they do not want to deal with students anymore, or the teachers who are willing to help, and it does, it does really make a difference. Yeah, so it's good to hear. Yeah, my, my wife, when, of course we see them sometimes on the street, you know, like I'm teaching different levels, uh, many students. And uh, like they just run to me with a smiley face, like teacher, teacher, Mr. Backing, Mr. Backing, 
and there's like my mom to tell me like they're really loving you like, so I think you're doing a great job with them I was like I'm trying my best I told her like I'm not the teacher but I'm trying my best to be a good one even like the end of subject like you know there's a report mm -hmm. after the first of all, this school like you give me a really good high report that as I said like teachers with many years of experience and they built up to be a teacher, you know? Mm -hmm. They study physics, study blah, 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 for teaching the kids. Mm -hmm. And you find at the end, this is not his thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it for the students and how we build something. And also, sometimes I give them lessons in life. Mm -hmm. This is what that I like. Because sometimes, for half of the lesson, I'm telling them a story about my own or personal experience mm -hmm. that I know I needed at this age mm -hmm. someone to tell me but none mm -hmm. of this uh, people around me did so, so half, sometimes half of the lesson we just I'm talking private story also it's not a lot to share private story but for the as they say the higher cause so I'm sharing private story of my life to this 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 mm -hmm. so to so in the future they don't uh, have this so I'm trying to educate them like in their life before in physics, like mm -hmm. as much as I can, yeah. yeah. So last question kind of goes along with that. What, so after you finished a, a year of teaching, what do you think are the most important skills or qualities of a good teacher? I would say it doesn't matter uh, if you're writing fancy on the board mm -hmm. or you using colors or stuff the most important thing is how to reach the kids mind mm -hmm. so I had different style of teaching with different classes mm -hmm. so for example the younger I would like trying different ways the older for example if I brought videos like for kids they won't like it so, like come on we are too old for this are you joking so I was trying to separate and this is the most important thing separate mm -hmm. uh, between the different students even students I was like treat them with extra strict students they were closed I was trying uh, to treat them with extra opening or mm -hmm. joke with them more so they got out from their box like I had a student and this is a short story and like she don't participate she's just like yeah writing notes I asked questions that she never participated until I was like asking her personally until mm -hmm. she uh, stand up and answer and when uh, we had the exams the first uh, term exams i was shocked that she had, had the highest mark between the whole level uh -huh. so who is this student and you know that the students that they don't talk a lot you cannot recall their faces like they was just like hiding in the corner sitting not, not saying anything and as i came because i I feel bad I put the participation mark low because she never said anything. <laughs> and she got like really good mark, the best between all. And I was like, when talk to her, I was like, oh, what's wrong? Why are you quiet? Why are you not participating? Why are you letting yourself losing marks in this point? And from that time, she started to participate, she started to talk, she started to have different ideas. And that's for me, it was really interesting to just, as a tertiary, take her head out. Yeah. So, uh, verse, uh, the, the main question, sorry, was the good teacher. So, also about uh, the techniques that you're using with the students. Of course, the appropriation will play a huge part. So, it's never I went to a lesson without I prepared. Mm. Even if I give it to other students uh, before. So, I was, I was like, always there's, it has to be freshly, mm -hmm. the, all the lesson in your mind, like fresh in your mind. So I always study it, like in every small corner, and sometimes even I give them extra information. It's not their book, but they will need it in the next year, so they'll have even a small idea, like, you know, plant seeds. Mm -hmm. Like in the next year, when they had the physics, it's like, ah, that's what he was talking about, you know? Then when I told them it will take pleasure. So I would say uh, the appropriation, the techniques, the style of the teacher himself, mm -hmm. like trying to make uh, a connection between you and the student, mm -hmm. 
of course not too personal to be uh, un, uh, official and uh, not too far I would say mm -hmm. so I was like just like we say we have Arab saying like keep a look uh, here or a line if it's too stressed mm -hmm. just give it to that side so it become less stressed okay. if he if you was like pulling too stressed you have to pull like if he was losing it you have to pull the hair or the rope so it will be just always straight yeah this is the in my opinion i'm not like i would say a coordinator or something in the school so my small small experience in teaching i would say this is the most important things that i had that i think the other teachers they didn't focus a lot on it's just like yeah package review or something they just like on the papers mm -hmm. because the student he, he can just go google and he find billions right. literally billions of sources mm -hmm. that's much much more better than the teacher make right like, especially with that fresh uh, teacher so it's not about like what you have it's about how you give it yes and if you have it can you give it this is the question like there's a lot of teachers that they have the information but there is no way to give this information mm -hmm. to the students so it's not about the sources if it's just about the sources okay take the books kids see you next year right. when you have the exam yalla study that's it right mm -hmm. i think so <laughs> yeah great insights uh and i i think you really do see things really clearly because you are new to this uh, <laughs> Uh, this hasn't been something like you've always wanted to do, so you can kind of see it with clear eyes. Maybe someone who is, they've been thinking... Just like a routine. Like, okay, yeah, that's they don't think about it anymore. Exactly. It's not new. But yeah, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Um, and hopefully these ideas help you guys in yeah. your, your studies out there or in your teaching or in pursuing it uh, in the future. And remember to subscribe to the channel, to like this video, and stay tuned next time for more teacher interviews. Thanks, I'm Abu Layth, and see you next time on The Wandering Middle Eastern Teacher. Bye-bye.